the real deal. What's up guys, I'm Jake. Welcome back to The Real Deal. This is part two of the brushless motor by Warhead. Part one was the unboxing and review. Part two is the full installation. This motor, this brushless motor, super powerful, super fast, is going into this stubby killer right here. You guys probably seen this in Warzone. This will triple tap you. Um, this is a car 15, young chodester on the block. Chodorino. So this is basically gonna be the ultimate sleeper. You're gonna see this and think it's like a $15 rental kid. <laughs> no. But in reality, it's got a brushless motor, Gate Titan, Siege Tag DSG, uh, Retro Arms gearbox, the whole shebang. So in this video, you're basically gonna see how to shim the brushless motor to the bevel gear because due to its sheer speed and power, I don't recommend just dropping it into your AEG and just playing with it. I would shim it so that the pinion gear does not get worn out, you know what I'm saying? So in this video, you're gonna learn exactly how to shim it via the half shell method. And as well, you're gonna see me diagnose some feeding issues. This car 15 uses a different style hop-up unit. It's like an AUG style hop-up and um, basically the issue is within the bucking, but I'll show you how to fix that later on in the video. All right, boys, let's get to installing this in the Chodester. The only thing we need to do is put Loctite on the pinion gear but this is how you would set it up. You put the tower on the shaft, pretty easy. You put your spring, well, we'll do that after. Get the pinion gear, and on the pinion, there is a grub screw. It might be hard to see it. We're gonna loosen the grub screw, put it on the, um, the shaft, put Loctite, and tighten that up. All right, boys, you just installed it. When you put your pinion gear on, it's gonna be a little stiff. You wanna push it on till the point where the shaft is flush with the top. That's what you're looking for. You heard? So now this is ready to go, real clicky. You know what I'm saying? A lot of good torque. Let's start shimming. All right, guys, let's open up this gearbox real quick. Tap it, please, just reset. Shims on the top, put them back so you don't forget. Whenever you're working inside the gearbox, just decompress the tappet plate spring. All right, boys, so let's take a look at what we got in here. We have some Siege Tech gear set, POM piston, POM head, modified rack. Very slight wear on the second tooth right here, right in the middle. I don't know if you guys can see that, but if this had the real deal piston AOE mod, you wouldn't have wear there, but it's still in very decent shape. We're gonna be doing the half shell method, so we're gonna be shimming with the top half of the gearbox, so we're gonna take the bevel gear. If this is a brand new build, your first step would be to shim the bevel gear to the gearbox. You wanna take both halves of the gearbox empty, and you wanna put the bevel gear inside and add as many shims as you need in order to remove that axial play. This is a pre-existing build, so that work has already been done. So for me, my next step is to analyze the motor height. Just attach your motor grip. On retro arms, there's four screw holes, so which means that there's two possible holes for the grip to be screwed into. I recommend screw both screws in. And when you're screwing it in, don't tighten one side all the way before the other because it could really mess with the angle of the motor grip. That's a boom. Something to note about Siege Tech gear sets uh, their bevel gear has so many more um, anti-reverse latch points than like SHS, I guess you could say. And so what that will allow is more adjustability of precock. You can achieve more precise precock settings by adjusting how far back you want the piston to go because the anti-reverse latch has more spots to stop the gear set. So that's something to think about. Key thing guys, before you start, there are two tabs on the red and black terminal. You have to remove this. All right, you see this little plastic thing? You got it, you got to remove that. I bet you a lot of you guys will skip over that step, but the real deal got you, you heard. <laughs> when you insert your motor, it's not doing this. And it's not going in easily. Either the angle of this grip to the gearbox is, is fucked, or something stopping the pinion gear from going through the actual grip in the motor, so. This is a good sign. You want it to be able to do that. Right. Close your motor grip. 
And again, this process will achieve a perfect bevel to pinion meshing, which basically means you could the rental kids. Right, so let's see. Oh, that's good. All right guys, so the first thing that I'm looking for is the motor height. So already I can tell that the, the pinion gear is pretty much perfect with the bevel gear. It's not too far up and it's not too far down. Basically the rear of the teeth on the pinion are meshing with the rear of the teeth of the bevel. So you want to be like be flush. Now the second thing that I'm looking for is how tight the beveled pinion is. I want a little bit of movement uh, side to side. So I'm pressing down as if it's in the gearbox and there is a little bit of movement. Yeah, it's perfect. There's about a 0.1 millimeter. There's about this much play. And what is this play? That's the teeth of the bevel. You see the, the teeth here? Going like this to the teeth of the motor. And that means that it's not too tight so that this way you don't get a whining, screeching noise. So. Yo son, it's fine. Yeah! I feel very safe with the shimming right now. Uh, again, this is an extremely powerful motor and it's, it's going no problem. Hear how snappy that is? Oh man, this is gonna sound like zoop, 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 zoop. So once your motor passes all these tests, the next step is to take the upper half of the shell and close it into the gearbox with nothing else but the bevel gear. And through the window right here, you'll move the bevel and see the play. You want about one millimeter play. All right, guys, we have the gearbox reassembled into the receiver. And a couple things we wanna note. Number one, I do lubricate the tappet plate. That's something I do do. I don't know if I told you, told you guys that. As well, on this build, I noticed that the gentleman who built it did not correct the AOE of the grip to the receiver. So basically, 90% of the time, uh, the receiver prevents the motor seating fully. What I mean by that is when we're shimming the gearbox and we have the grip screwed into the half shell, the grip in reality is like this. It's like, it's like slightly higher than what the gearbox allows. So that means that our shimming would push our motor down about a millimeter and we want that perfect real deal, you heard? So, come on now. Time to modify this. Long story short, I'm gonna be uh, sanding over here, sanding over here, reducing the size so that there is a small gap uh, on the top and bottom. This way I know that when this is connected, there's nothing stopping that perfect alignment. So, I'm gonna do that right now. So before this build is complete, it had some issues with misfeeding and um, that's what the client was complaining of. So the first thing I wanna check is the bucking. So sometimes the lip of the bucking sticks out too far in the hop-up unit. And yeah, this hop-up unit is weird. And as you can see the blue bucking right there, it's sticking out a little bit into the chamber. And I believe this is what's causing the misfeeding issues. So let's do a test right now. I'm gonna drop a BB into the chamber and boom, it gets stuck at the top of the chamber and it never comes down. So that's causing misfeeding in this inner barrel assembly. So I'm gonna to have to either modify the lip of the bucking or pull it down just a little bit because it is getting in the way. So that's what's causing misfeeding. So if you just install the new inner barrel and bucking and it's not shooting right, the first thing I would check is I would do this test, drop a BB in the feed ramp. And if it's not letting it pass, that's what it was. You heard. All right, boys, I just adjusted the uh, in a barrel assembly and let's see how it is now. I removed one millimeter of material off the bucking lip. Every time. Chodester. Active braking is on zero. Pre-cocking is on zero. And uh, let's see, this is uh, SP-150 spring. Let's see auto. Oh, shit. Yep. Oh my goodness. As you can see, the brushless motor does work with the Gate Titan MOSFET. And make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm gonna be testing it with the P-Run Hybrid. Without any further ado, I'm gonna do another trigger response report because I, I love this thing. I can't get enough. And what's powering this is a, it's an 11.1, how many MAH? 1,000 MAH. That's so little. So as you guys know, the bigger the MAH, the higher the rate of fire capability. But long story short, guys, don't use 1000 MAH. Use bigger batteries, all right? This is, this is the least performance you can get because it's the smallest battery, so.
Don't make me do it. Damn, son. Let me get that 3,000 MAH, you heard? Alrighty. Alright, so this is with the 3,000 MAH Titan battery. Yo, Polestar. What you got on me, homie? Nothing. Thank you guys for taking the time watching the video and learning some stuff about Airsoft. Make sure you're subscribed and to show YouTube that you like this stuff, hit that like button, drop a comment so that we push this culture. All right, guys? Till next time, see you on the workbench. You heard? The real deal.